everybody and welcome to the Salty Show and welcome back to Imperator Rome with the amazing Imperator Invictus overall mod and a couple other UI mods. I hope you guys do well today. If you're like, subscribe, and if you want to see more, obviously, please leave your comments and feedback below. Um, I do want to do a little test run of the series and I really wanted to get into it and see what you all think. Obviously, the player base is rather small because this game was uh, unfortunately somewhat revived and then abandoned again, but with the amazing efforts of the modder behind this, it really really does their does a great job of finishing the campaign to the best of it, their abilities obviously not being game devs so in our first take we tried Etruria, which was a horrible idea considering we were next to the powerhouse known as rome so some commenters or viewers recommended starting far up in the north to get the bearings and as much as i do think it would be enjoyable um, i'm gonna try and keep things a little better we're well, not a little better but a little different i have a burning for the uh, old world the greek world and um so i'm gonna try and stick over here now i'm not gonna be an idiot and play like athens or sparta um i am i am not skilled we would die just the same so we're gonna i'm gonna take on iron man mode but we're gonna be playing as the ptolemaic kingdom um it's a very easy start we have a huge kingdom but i do think maybe playing as this big contender down here in the south um we can learn a lot but we can also have quite a few battles and uh, go about it from there. I am going to keep all the game rules the same. Uh, I am going to turn on Dynastic Diadochi names. All it does is changes Thrace and Macedon to their respective leaders. I'm not going to turn on the chaotic faction uh, things like that. But that is what we are going to do. And that is where we're going to start this. We're laying, playing as uh, Ptolemais I, Soter Lagatis. Let us begin and begin we will. I did do a little bit of a test run, but we're going to get into all of that. Alexandros the Great Argid. 18 years ago, the Argid king Alexandros III, which I didn't realize he was the third, died suddenly in Babylon at the age of 32. In five years preceding his death, his continuing military successes had reshaped the world as known to the Greeks, his empire stretching uninterrupted from Egypt to the Indus. The suddenness of Alexandros' early death and his lack of a chosen successor sent shockwaves through the hierarchy of satraps and generals who attended him, splintering his empire into elements ruled by these potentates styled themselves as the Diadochi, or Diadochi. For many years, they and their successors have been locked in a bigger, bitter struggle over the future of the empire, drawing all nations within their sphere of influence into conflict. The wars of the Diadochi will surely continue. Perhaps it is up to the Ptolemaic kingdom to decide how they will end. The die is cast. And so it is. So we've got a few things to do. First and foremost, really, I know what ideas we want. Military ideas, we're going to go for order of retreat. Oratory ideas, we're going to go for loyalty. Uh, these other ones are good, but I think maintaining the loyalty of our generals is a really good idea. And we're not gonna we're not gonna get our third we're gonna maintain that uh, I want to build up some of our influence we are going to call down a or give a omen which this is one thing I wanted to point out as well the the intricacies of this game really do seem magnificent like the ability to sack temples and having all these holy sites provide different buffs is really great we can look to trade these out eventually. But for now, I'm not going to really worry about it. Um, I think we're going to do this one because we're going to get the extra Freeman and uh, monthly ruler popularity gain will grow for five years. So that's going to help. And then we're going to move on to it. Yeah, well, we'll look at that in a minute. Yeah, we're going to move on to our military planning. We have eight inventions. We are going to unlock Astral Navigation, which is going to give us a uh, port in Lahami. Thank you very much. And actually, wait a minute, where are the other ones at? Gains one free province investment. I do wonder how that works, because I couldn't figure this out. One free province investment. So we'll look into that later. I don't, because I don't think we can... Yeah, I don't think we can look at that. But either way, that's what we're going to do for now. And then we're going to go over here. Standardized measures. 
and we're not gonna worry about aggressive that we're gonna get loyalty of characters because that's really gonna help hopefully diplomatic reputation could be good or that tyranny that's already gained that we've got three left to spend I'm trying to think where I want to spend it All of them are really good. Right to be heard, we give national citizen output. Which could help. We all could, we could get the tax and the build time though. I think we might. Oh yeah, because I work on the military though. Getting the learning the job starting experience. Basic training or supply limit increase. I think we'll start work on that. And then getting that army weight modifier would be good too. That is all our inventions done. You have to let me know in the comments below what you guys pick. Um, how bad of an idea it was for me to do what I just did there. But we're going to keep rolling. And we're going to keep moving. Now. One thing I do want to get is an import. And we're going to look for something that'll send. We're already getting benefits from these. So we could get benefits from precious metal. Which if we do that's going to give national citizen happiness or iron. Which if we get a surplus of iron. Going to give us that heavy infantry. Then there's dates. Commerce income or vegetables. I think we're going to do the commerce income, so we're going to get some dates and try and import them from maybe you guys. There we go. So it's going to start giving us that national commerce boost as well. Now, the unfortunate thing here is we have a lack of, uh, we have, uh, scorned families. Families that don't have enough to do, basically. And the only negatives is based two issues. One is our own family, the Lagged. The second is the Magged. And they just, we don't have enough, enough men to do things with. Unfortunately, this is, uh, not modern times. Women are not allowed to just do whatever they want. And, uh... So their characters are not u as useful in the government office. So we're going to have to deal with that at a later date. Something we're going to have to watch out for. And I am thinking about it now. We could. These guys are not theoretically a part of the family. Because you see the Lagged family, we only have a couple. These are just characters. Uh, ruler family, yeah. Those are just our characters that we have available to us. So we're going to be careful about that. So we are going to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play, start playing the game. Because we can have that go underway. National tax modifier. Now this guy, I do think we want to get rolling... Actually, wow, he's got 14 finesse. He's loyal by 30. Um, I do actually think, yeah, that's going to do us some service. And then I'm going to go... We're going to go down to mission. We do have three missions available at the start, which is the Eastern Border, Greater Empire, and the Macedonian Pharaoh. We're going to pick the Macedonian Pharaoh, as I believe internal disputing is more important. Pharaohs have reigned over Egypt for a millennia. Deputy of the gods among mortals and holders of divine office, the pharaohs owned all the lands of Egypt, officiated religious ceremonies, enacted the laws, and were directly responsible for the maintenance of cosmic balance. During his reign, Alexander showed himself to be increasingly attracted to the Eastern idea of divine royalty, which was foreign and loathed by his Macedonian collaborators. Among those was Ptolemaeus I. However, times are changing. We now rule over a country rich in ancient tradition and a people mostly made up of Egyptian natives. 
The Macedonian overlords will have to strike a balance between the expectations of their people and the reality of a Macedonian kingdom to create a solution that will truly and uniquely be theirs, a Ptolemaic Egypt. This mission will be considered complete when we've uh, ensured the prosperity of the Ptolemaic kingdom. And we will be starting this mission, I believe. And we're going to immediately go for, I think, the easiest one. Um, I know. I actually didn't look at these. Well, let me look at this. Hold on. Alexander has a metropolis status. A royal... Wow, okay, that's all you got to do for this one? Revoke. Found metropolis. Population is greater or equal to 80. Okay, we're a bit behind there. Um... I'm sure it will rise, but that is a bit much. So I don't think we're going to target that one just yet. But that is something important to remember. Then we need city statuses out of these two areas. Which you can found cities, but it will be a task for sure to found cities there. So, I do think the easiest one we're going to do is right here, which is uh, Canopolis has city status, and Knockoffs has two marketplaces and two tax buildings, which we can do rather quickly. So, we're going to go in here, we're going to get... I think we're going to get 73. So, they're going to go ahead and build the tax, or the marketplaces to start with. We will look at that in just a second. I wanted to change these really quickly because I remembered I needed to do this earlier. Okay, they're, so they're the same. Good. News arrives from the Antigonid Kingdom. Our spy master enters the throne room and gestures that they would like a word with our ruler. They bring tidings from the Antigonids. The Battle of Salamis was a disastrous loss for us, and most of our fleet has been sunk off the coast of Cyprus. Moreover, apparently Antigonus considers this such a feat that he has himself crowned a Basilis after his victory. Any pretense of the argued line of secession has been officially cast aside, and the throne of Alexander's empire is ripe for the taking. Spice Master has more news, though. However, it appears the Antigonus heir, Demetrius, has been slandering the other Diadochi, and has been giving them unflattering titles. Seleucus, the commander of elephants, Lysimochus, the treasurer, and even Agathokis, the governor of Sicily. Though he is not one of us, Ptolemaeus asks his spymaster what title has been bestowed upon him. The spymaster is silent for a moment, and then answers, Admiral. Ptolemaeus' laughter rings out across the throne room. But we will crown ourselves God King in the response, or Admiral. So we could get some bonuses to our navy, and some popularity. Or we could do the popularity and gain state religious happiness and omen power, which I think we're going to do that, because it would also grant Pharaoh status which grants uh, monthly legitimacy, omen power, and if he's a governor, religious happiness, prominence, and zeal. All very good benefits. I think we're going to go with that. That is going to rise. When we get to 80, I think I'll go ahead and pop out this next idea for Orator, which would probably be the corruption reduction. Now, we do have some invoice. We are sacking quite a bit of cash. All of a sudden, taxes, commerce... Wages, fort maintenance, fleet maintenance, army maintenance. That's fine. Um, we're going to let that play out. We could... Okay, we can sell one of our papyrus. Or maybe not. It didn't matter. It did not matter. Good. So we do have some loyalty issues, but I don't think we're that worried about it just yet. Um... Larian local power, the province of cloth from Memphis. We have three cloth, why not? Um, sure. That's fine. So we are going to roll with that, and I think... We do have, obviously, the Giza Pyramid Complex, something very unique to us. It is granting a whole host of different bene benefits. In fact, it took me a minute to find it last time, but I cannot... 
These are so cool. You, you have wonder builders, and that is amazing. Really cool. Oh. Oh, I'm glad I remember that. One thing I want to do immediately is... We're going to be working on an internal stability, but war for sure will eventually kick off with the Diadochi. And I do want some alliances, and I think getting one with the Napatea, a decently strong kingdom to the east of us, would secure that border a lot. It would mean we, you know, all of this would be ripe and secured, leaving us with just this border with the Antigonids. And Judea, technically. I'm a little less worried about Judea, though. Um, so I do think we're going to go ahead and offer them an alliance there. They have an alliance with Lehan as well, so that's a sizable border. We could also align ourselves with them as well, but I think we're going to hold off on that. Because we are friends with... Seleucia the first, which is great. Now, one thing I do need to pay attention to, that's something I struggled with in the Etruria showcasing, is our political game. Something far we need to watch out for, basically. Something very important that we have to do. Now, how old are you? You're 48. Um... Maybe we don't need anything, but the wars of the Daidoshi, yeah, I figured this was going to kick off. Having built the largest empire in the world, there are the largest empire the world has ever seen, Alexandrus the Great died suddenly 18 years ago. With no clear successor to the empire, his generals have since fought over the spoils, coming to be known as the Diadochi, or successors. Our ruler, Ptolemaeus, one of Alexandrus' oldest friends, has secured Egypt, the wealthiest province in the empire, for himself. Expansion into Greece and Syria has, however, been thwarted by Antigus Monophatamus, the former satrap of Phrygia, whose son, Demetrius the Besieger, recently crushed our entire fleet at the Battle of Salamis off Cyprus. Antigonus is perhaps the most successful of the Diadochi, but success breeds enemies, and he now stands alone and vulnerable. The Empire belongs to the strongest, so we can now use the uh, legacy of Alexander Wargol on other Diadochi, and we gain claims all on a lot of them. These claims and Wargol will, dis oh, will disappear upon the death of our ruler. Ah, so we have to be quick about it then. Wow could be quick about it or we just die how interesting intriguing indeed so both our for some reason loyalty in our researchers is a problem somehow you're 84 loyal wow governor of Greece How are you the governor of Greece? I don't think we have... I don't think we have land in Greece. I sure hope we don't. I just realized that. How interesting. Okay, so our heir is now of age. Very nice. He is a very good Ptolemaeus Crest Ligatus. He's the primary heir. 54 loyalty. He's uncaring. Um, oh well. He's gonna be king or pharaoh one day, so it doesn't matter. His wealth is doing alright. Oh, he's gambling. He is in perfect health, but he's modest. Yeah, he's uncaring. Firstborn, ambitious, jealous, in the blood of Ptolemy. Um, arranging a reputation with him immediately is going to be good. Married chosen suitor. Alright. Let us... Thias. Oh, you're way too old. Because he's just now turned... Like 16, I believe. So, you're off the table. Secession support, family of the ruler. Uh, well, you're a part of our family. Oh, that's weird. But that's actually how our marriage laws are currently set up, which is a little unfortunate. So, I think most of these are going to be within our family. Yeah, they're all Lagos. 
Man, that's rough. That's real rough. So you can technically change that. Government and laws. We go over here. We could do... Secession law is familiar in this manner of secession. The eldest child, the ruler, would be primary heir. It's commonplace for royal siblings to intermarry. Eldest male child always. This is a simple and ancient... None alive remember the age of elected kings. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure why this is the way we have to do it. Our stability would take a hit pretty hard, and so would our influence. I mean, I feel like we could probably play it off. Yeah. He's a... Okay, he's a pretty good finesse. Marshall's okay. His zeal's pretty good. Um... 7-3. Okay, you're not the best there. Lycia is 24. Trustworthy. Crafty. Ooh, that corruption's pretty high, but... Content. Crafty. I would increase stuff. Okay. Oh, you're 50. We need to sort by age. Patient. Shy. Ambitious. Eh. Generous. Eh. I do kind of want to sort out the air real quick. I'm sorry. We'll read that in just a minute. I want to try and get someone. Demo doesn't look bad. Oh, but Nikita is not actually that bad at all. Tin finesse. Excuse me, everybody. Sorry. I do kind of worry about the ambition. Um... Someone that is not going to try and kill. I think Demo here is pretty okay. So yeah, we'll do that. You guys marry. Hopefully that'll work. But distraught officials from the province of Miles Hormos are reporting that a or insubstantial portion of the province's grain reserves have been allowed to fester. Oh, well, that's not good. The local people are in uproar. All look to us for justice. Oh, boy. Come on, guys. Come on. Governor of Upper Egypt. Okay. So, set it to the proper standards are followed. We gain... He gains 10 loyalty. We lose a little bit of gold, and they lose 200 food. And all under the watchful eye of Argus. We gain 10 popularity. He will no longer be governor. Loses 15 loyalty. Stockpile hindering for 100, which would just grant that. Okay. Crucify the handlers. Wow. We gain five popularity. He gains ten loyalty. We lose, we gain three tyranny. And the province of Miles increases loyalty. I think this is the best one. We can take the tyranny hit, I believe. Yeah, I think... Well, we could set it to that, but if we do this... They all... The, the actual town gains loyalty. So, yeah. Crucify the handlers. Okay. And this did go through. While Thomas has enjoyed himself, his life immensely as a man of leisure, he is someone in a void is very much to deliver proposal of marriage to the beautiful young maiden, Demo. Yes. Here we are by the mournful background. 
So, Tomei's Lagos and Demo Lagos will be married. They both gain loyalty. No, uh, no, no, no. Marriage it is. Good. No. Alright. So, I think we're, we're going to speed things up now. And we're going to roll on through. War in Greece. The Antigonids and their hubris and folly have chosen again to resume hostilities with Cassandros the first of Antropid of Macedon. In a vain attempt to prove dominance over the known as the Diadochi. Troubling news. So things are kicking off. Things are kicking off indeed. I just realized you're our heir. Okay, the maggots have assumed quite a bit. They're now governors, so they're happy. We could give you suggest training. No. We do need to give him something, though. Um. We have the influence of the Lagged's family. This is our family. So the fate of the kingdom... And that of the Lagged family is and always will be intertwined. It is therefore a matter of great urgency that there is currently not enough Lagged persons of quality. Yeah, you got that right. Or literally got that right. Recognizing our plight, two of our loyal clients offered to fill the place. Gala and Sula will be up to the task. He now belongs to the Lagged family. Our ancient family were reducing its prestige and standing among other families. Ooh, 30 prestige. Um, if you turn down both, you can also, from their respective characters, but only three family members are able to work, we should look at expanding. Yeah, turn them down. It's suggesting that we work on this. Which I do agree. And I am looking to fix that. Go ahead and merge our navies together. And let us appoint... A... Let us appoint our heir, yes. Our heir will lead the fleet. Now, this could be a horrible idea, but we're going to try. Um, ship damage done. Aborting tactics. Damage. Man, you, the Liberians are weak. The Triremes are a little better. Monthly ship costs. I would like to grab some more triremes, honestly. But we really don't have the economy to do so for now. No, do not do that. And we do have a fortress up there already, which is good. On our farthest border. I mean, Papyrus is nice, but we're going to continue letting that play out. We have built one of the marketplaces. And Canopus needs a city status. It's going to take a lot of influence. I think we can do it, though. I mean, I think... We might as well. Found the city of Canopus. It's gonna tank our influence, but that's fine for now. It'll be built in about roughly two years. Hopefully we can do that. Uh... Ooh, now you... 
want pap papyrus from Memphis. Um, I mean, I'd really like to make them friends, but no, sorry. Where? Who? Oh! Where did he go? Did he die? Oh, no, he assumed a position in the government, it looks like. Or no, I appointed him there. This is not the same man that was ruling here. We now do, we do have a son of Lagos. Wow. Wow. You're still having kids at 64. Very well. Now with that. You really need an army. Or a leader. How do we not have a leader? Well, you know, at that point, I'd rather have... We can't move him until 452. At that point, I'd rather have our heir leading here. Honestly. Let us see who has... You're healthy. Um, nope, you're not a good commander. Great. Marshal status. You seem pretty okay. You're an A at least. Um, not the best. Not the best. You're uncaring. Uh, you're... Actually, that's a good thing. How do I... I wonder how we bring him into the family. And, like... Give... Assign characters to this. This is all stuff that I'm, I'm hoping you guys can help me with. As uh, I figure this stuff out. How do we appoint... Um, troops here. All very interesting. Oh, we can add a tribune to this. L the first entry will always be a lega. Oh, okay, we can do it right here. Alright, found out. Thank you. There we go. And it will be uh, Gilstus here, I think. Value display the potential strength of the leader and raise in this governorship. And we could add more. I don't really know exactly if we should, but he's a seven. He has no other traits, which is fine. There you go. I don't necessarily know the different why you need two tribunes. He's a legate and he's a tribune, yeah. But we're gonna roll with it for now. Oh, well now, wait a minute. Oh, now we pick from here. Okay, I see. And he's gonna be the commander of it. Okay. We have an unused trade route. Let's go bring in something else. Um. Vegetables aren't that important. Precious metals. Iron would help with heavy infantry. I'm thinking precious metals. We're gonna get some national citizen happiness. That is something I haven't looked at really, is the precious metal or the citizen happiness. That is something I did delve into a good bit earlier. But I have not right now. We do have a lot of people. Thankfully, 
the Mithrite culture has citizen status, so... Oh god, we do own land in Egypt. Oh no. You're kidding me. I really don't want this. I do not want this one little bit. Um... Well, that is important to know. Okay, so we now have a, another son, so we should be able to assign him to something important. Well, right, you're a... Um... Could swap you out with a person of loyalty. Ooh, you're gonna marshal status of mine. He's steadfast too. So perhaps. You guys will have to forgive me. Yeah, do that. And then swap him with Lagos here. There you go, buddy. Oh, he is a pretender to the throne. That is a little concerning. I didn't even think about that. He's loyal, though, for now. I would say... Uh-oh. In defense of Kandros I on Trapid, the long war rages and our generals assure us that it is time we rallied against the Antigonid threat. A thoughtful voice at the back of the war council ever suggests that perhaps a deal might be struck. I see. Sorry everybody if y'all could hear that a little alarm there. Our promises must be honored. We'll declare war on the Antigone Dynasty. A offer for exchange of Antigone territory. I see. So it is calling us to war. He has claimed a good bit of land already. He's including what appears to be their capital. Our promises must be honored. War it is. So. The war goal of Legacy of Alexander... To show superiority. Athens, a lot of. Uh, I assume we have Serenaka, Kos, Andros, and the Ptolemy Kingdom. Alrighty. So we're now at war. And immediately it's time we march in. And that should mean. We're able to go here. We can raise levies. 37 pops from Lower Egypt. 4 additional supports. 10 claimed by the Strakos. We can get a couple more. The thing we're going to do, though, is raise levies from Lower Egypt. Yeah, we're at war. Envelopment. Is that really your best one? Yes. As we've got light infantry, light cav, heavy cav, camel cav. No heavy infantry. That is a little concerning. Heavy cav is on the sides. Um, we're gonna be real careful with this army. I feel like. 
Let's go ahead and keep marching, though. And war it is. We can call Nabatea, call to arms, and they will join. Yes, indeed. Arabian regional power, and Nabatea has honored our military alliance. Thank you very much, Nabatea. Planning your demise. That's not good. We might have waited a little too long. Serenaco. Oh. They're protected by us. It doesn't even matter. I didn't realize that. Uh, the conflict between the Dieters is flaring up. Sukut army is crossing in. Taking it. Well, they're taking a turn out war with everybody. This was to be expected. We are sieging down this location. And our army leader is on the way. Ptolemy is the first. At this point, I think we might want to get that monthly corruption reduction. Go ahead and do that. Why not? We are doing great there. We do actually have time. We've got two marketplaces. We need two tax offices. And once we do that, we actually should be good to go. Oh, I didn't do this. Never mind. Or no, it's almost... It's in the way. It's in the works. My bad. Nabatea has joined us, which is great. Hopefully we can take up a lot of food. Or a lot of land. Now, I'm not too sure what we want to do about you. If there's... What do we want to do? Some fort. Search and destroy, engage pirates, transport armies, units, act independently. Let's just send you up the coast for now. Because we don't know where they're, where they're at, so. Even lots of marches, but despite being the weakest of the Daidochi states, like the Mochi Satrapi has surprisingly began an invasion. It is announced just how long his funeral games have lasted. So everyone's at war with the Antigonids now, because that is kind of what they got themselves into. I think you can make your way up here. We're going to let you siege that down. Nothing yet. I do wonder where their fleet's at. Well, this is giving us vision, actually, so we could go check. Either way, the siege is going well. He is on his way. We don't see a navy blockaded ports. Oh, there's a fleet right there. Go crush it. It's a tiny little fleet, too. All right, we're now besieging that. Oh, what did that do? Did they just break free? Oh, I wonder what happened there. How interesting. Revenge of the Furies. Our envoys bring news from Macedon, where it appears Bacillus Cassandros has succumbed to the disease of kings. Oh, no. Gout. That is not fun. Poor man. I think we'll do search and destroy enemy fleets within our naval range. So he's gonna, they're just gonna go on search and destroy. Petition. The wealthier residents of Pylos Lehman have sent a formal petition on behalf of the entire province. Peneus Ahmed, governor of Cyrenaica. It seems his taxation policy is causing quite a furor among the landowners who are having to work their slaves to the bone. He's doing a fine job. He gains five corruption, ten loyalty. Petitions ignored. Local happiness goes down. Center rivers in to ensure rules are being followed. Gain five popularity. He loses ten loyalty and ten gold. And ten corruption he gains. Remove the miser. Ten popularity. He's a no longer governor. Loses twenty loyalty. 
we gain one point of that of uh, tyranny. Is he a part? I don't think he's a part of a family. He's got a power base of five. Yeah, he's not. He's trying to befriend a tribune. I think remove him immediately. And then we can assign a new governor in Siwa. Now, governors rely on finesse. Yes. Um, you're a 10, you're a 9. 10 finesse, and you're a benefactor. You're going to give us happiness. Uh, yes, you. Welcome, good sir. Welcome. That siege is going well. Or I hope it's going well. The phase is underway. Our fleet's making its way to the Aegean to engage the enemies. I don't see any of their fleets yet. I don't really know if I want to see any of their fleets. Thankfully so far, though, the southern border... Oh! The Cappadocian army there. Not matched for ours, though, thankfully. We're bringing quite a few... Levy forces. Oh, he's dead. Alright, we did take a good bit of land. Very nice. And the siege down here has been won. Alright, so we're going to bring you bring this army up. Or this legion up. And move forward. Oh, where are you going to go? Why are you going that way? You're hunting fleets. There's no fleets down there. Oh, now wherever they go, if we can hit them hard, that'd be great. Go ahead and make our way there. Yep. Friends in high places. Hellenes, for reasons known only to himself, has begun voicing his opinion to support. Ptolemy's the... F okay, that's good. Such... Geico kind of actions and may be tiresome. Becomes friends and he gains loyalty. That's fine. Move there, quickly. Nabatea should come to our aid. Or, yeah, they did, okay. And now the Pharaoh himself is there and the Cappadocians will fall. Battle of Ptolemaeus. And during the struggle, 2,000 of our own men died. And we killed four of theirs. Uh, you go up there. You go over here. You guys actually lost a good bit of troops. The following people support one of the pretenders. Now that's something we don't want. Gelsto Legate supports Lagus. And he supports Pretender to the throne. You, sir, need to not do that. I don't know. Demand support for the heir. Loyalty is greater or equal to 50, so he's not loyal to begin with. Okay. We would give him 100 gold. We're just trying to make friends with him, I guess. Yeah, give it a go. Why not? Nabatea is waging a gruesome and swift war. It is well known that guy has been seeking particular government office. Mm, give him what he wants. Your ruler will make a large amount of progress towards befriending him. Mm, no, that's not right. We don't need to do that. We need to watch out for that. We don't want him to... We don't need the pretender to be supported. Oh. Okay, I'm glad I was... I'm glad that was a success. We just engaged their fleet. 
They're unfortunately going to win here, Athens is. I did not think about that. Oh, well. But we're making... I think we're making swift progress. Serenica's on their way to help. Everyone likes gold. How much of the friendship... Okay, so... We have a lot of personal wealth. Yeah, I think you can take it, buddy. Oh, you kind of broke free. That's not good. Oh, well, I guess. That siege is underway. We're going to begin our siege there. We have a lack of governors. I really wouldn't want to assign a governor here just yet, but... Minus Midas's touch. Ooh, that's a good one, actually. Um, yeah, I think you've got a high loyalty as well, so that'd be pretty good. Wild beasts from far corners of the earth make for eye-catching and exotic gifts. Various merchants. Okay, so this is only a tiger is to ensure to win him over. Ptolemy's the first. He loses a hundred. A Nile crocodile. Okay, so it's just out of his personal wealth. Uh, Ptolemy the first has plenty of wealth. So we're not too worried about that. And if we can stop him from supporting, that would be great. I do want to make sure our power base is secured. Canopus has become a city. That's great. And we can complete the mission here. Alexandria is meant to be the beating heart of the Delta's economy. However, there are other ports and cities with great potential, and we have wisely chosen two for our investment. The Kratis is an archaic Greek foundation that has always been the main hub of commerce. The city has grown larger and richer. We'll tolerate that it's an isolated exception. Although being a smaller, so a similar history, we will get rich. Local tax and local import. Very nice. So we did get a, another import ability, and... really could start looking to import other things probably um, if we import stone we could get a build cost reduction that would be pretty nice actually All very good. I, I see. I really do enjoy a lot of this stuff. Okay, wine could be really nice. Importing wine. Legion maintenance cost would go down. So, and I'm sure we'll eventually get another bit. Our, al our satraps or our vassals are really hitting them hard there, so that's good. We actually secured two ships. That's great. Fridge of two have paid off. So they're now friends. Can you please stop supporting him? Friend of the ruler is gone up. Force conversion... Oh, he's not Hellenic. Demand support. Support for air. For 60 months. Yeah. Till 458. I don't really know if our leader's gonna live that long, so... We should head up there. I thought you were gonna support... Oh, does that... Huh one of the pretenders maybe it doesn't do what I thought it did 
Now you're still a little disloyal and you have a strong power base. We probably need to make you a little better. Um, give him a holding and make it the weakest. And we lose a little bit of money. That's fine. Make him loyal so we don't have to worry about him. And unfortunately, our stability is dropping just a little bit. Why is that aggressive expansion also decaying by... Okay, so our stability kind of needs to go up. Conquest of Tyrus, the city of Trost has finally fallen to our troops and is now in our hands. Tyrus has been home to the Phoenician traders since time immemorial. For many centuries, the traders of Phoenician cities traveled as far as Hispania, far to the east. It is really amazing what they did. Uh, the Kong. So, while the city is under our control, our men and advisors wonder how we should treat our old enemy. Oh, okay. There have been people asking for us to sack the city. We can leak Tyros. We gain 10 legitimacy. We already have 100. Lagat's gained 15 popularity. He's already at 100. They gain Merciful Conquerors. They will not mind if we take some precious artifacts. We gain 120. Five prominence. Lose a little bit of popularity. They lose some happiness. Secrets of money will be taken back home. Build cost. Build time. We gain a lot of money. Um, Lagatus loses 10 popularity. He gains 5 corruption. Leave it alone for now. See to Tyros. Legatus. Legatus has led his men to glorious victory. Let the looting be gentle. 10 prestige. 54. Popularity. Let the men roam. Oh, that would be... None shall hide. Cruel. He would gain cruel. That monthly tyranny is not something we want. Just that, I think. We're not going to sack it to the ground, but we are going to take a good bit of it. And that secured a lot of the south, which is great. A religious procession is struggling the religious echelons of our society, and peasants really come to light. On the other hand, our high priest and his attendants demand the distance needed to do their jobs. Lose five stability. Hmm. Three stability and ten loyalty. Six stability, open temples. How about this one? There's nothing, no side effects. And we'll have a little bit more stability. We need it. Unfortunately, we are... I mean, we are literally winning every every turn. Need over 10 war support from battles. From 9 battles. We are literally occupying everything that we can of them. I don't even think they've sieged us down here. Maybe they have, actually, but... Either way... We're really carving through them, so I mean, hmm. Fingers crossed that continues. We are pushing pretty far up into Syria. We're about to link up with Seleucia, or the Seleucids, which we actually have. They're about to cut us off when it comes to capturing any more land. We own all the way up into here, though. So we can't really can't really go too far. I mean, we can go all the way. We can keep pushing if they don't get to it first. That's rather interesting to know. And then, obviously, Swukia is going to eventually turn into our biggest rival. I think that's where I'm going to call it today, though. We have a ongoing war where we're going to wrap up against the Antigonids, hopefully. Um, we're, t we're being very successful. I don't know if everybody else is, but we are. And things are going well. Um, Please leave your comments and tips, suggestions in the description below. I'm going to try and shorten these videos just a little bit to make them a little more viewer friendly. But if you stay till the very end, I cannot appreciate you guys enough. Let me know if you want to see more of this by liking the video and doing all that fantastic stuff. But thank you all for watching. I've been your host, Salty. Peace out, everybody.